Thank you, Mobeen, very much. And it's uh, really an honor to be here today. So uh, thank you and thanks for the team that put this together. I was uh, really marveled at how uh, assiduous the process was. And uh, with all the speakers uh, needing to connect and show their uh, PowerPoints and to do a rehearsal. And, and I really applaud the, uh, the group and the work that you all have done to make this happen today. I think this is a day, that obviously, in uh, Louisville that we, a lot of us are thinking about the, uh, the big game. And uh, I'm a big basketball fan. But I think what's happening here in this room, in some ways, is decidedly more important than the game. Um, I will watch the game. But <laughs> so, so why are we here? What's the big question? Um, for me. I looked at some of the age-old problems that we face and some of the new solutions that I think that are available to us. The age-old problems uh, like war and hunger uh, are still with us. Fortunately, some of the uh, statistics on conflict is that things are improving over the last 20 years. I think there is something in the neighborhood of 32 wars or conflicts that countries are engaged in. I've seen that number between 32 and 41, but it's been a steady decline over the last 20 years. Uh, with hunger, uh, we were making progress until the uh, end of the century, and we've lost some of that progress in the beginning of this century with 935 million people every day being hungry. Uh, that's 13% of the population. Um, we still have trouble with a number of people who can get to clean water with two million children dying a year from, um, from drinking contaminated water. Those are the problems. We, we know the problems, but I think somehow they seem more personal. They seem more immediate. We know about them. Uh, we know that those are people that are connected to us in some important way. And we also, it seems to me, have people coming up who are yearning to do something about it, to really make a difference, not in some of the old ways that haven't worked too well, but in newer ways, in innovative ways. So as I, and, and of course, the, uh, the speaker covered some of the complexities of the, of the age we are living in and some of the problems associated with that. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is to talk about social, well, today you're going to explore education, environment, and social entrepreneurship. I think those three things are connected also to what's referred to as the triple bottom line. Not only are businesses focused on making money, more and more they have to look at the other two elements of the bottom line. That is, are they helping the communities they live in? Are they good for the society that they're part of? And the environment, what's their footprint? Uh, are they doing more harm than good? It's a triple bottom line. Those are promising uh, developments. There's an increasingly blurring distinction between for-profits and non-profits in this regard. Um, let's talk about social entrepreneurship for a minute. Social innovation, civic enterprise, this goes by a lot of names. Um, one of the better definitions that I've come across is that by Paul Light, um, professor at uh, New York University who's written extensively on social innovation and social entrepreneurship. But the three elements here are sustainability, large-scale change, and pattern-breaking ideas. And what I'd like to do is to share with you some nonprofits in Louisville and some of the things they're doing. And, and, and I could spend the entire morning sharing some stories. There are, are over 1,500 nonprofits in the Louisville community, uh, many of them doing remarkably great things in new and different ways. But I'm just going to talk about three of them with you this morning. Um, one is uh, a, a collaboration between 4C, which is Community Coordinated Child Care. Anyone ever hear of that organization, a few of you? Uh, they provide professional development for child care staff. They review the operations of child care facilities and give a star rating so that parents uh, know if this is a good child care and how it's rated. Uh, 
so th they're about advancing the, the quality of child care in this community. They teamed up with the Louisville Science Center, where the Louisville Science Center uh, trained child care professionals to teach hands-on scientific ways of going about discovering and learning about the environment, about science. Uh, certainly didn't have to do that. It was entirely mission motivated. Two uh, employees talking to each other, why don't we do this? And they formed a joint venture. And that has pattern breaking ideas, right? It has some sustainability, and it could be a large scale change. Um, another one. This is the uh, garden atop the American Life Building, uh, American Life and Casualty Building at the uh, end of Fifth Street. Um, how many are familiar with that building or this uh, garden on top? Um, this was a joint venture with Bernheim Forest and Arboretum, uh, teaming up with a for-profit, American Life and Casualty, and developing one of the earlier uh, vegetation rooftops in Louisville. And you'll hear today from Gil Holland, who is doing a lot of work in this area, in the New Lou area, around uh, lead and, and green buildings and uh, that sort of thing. This is a, a kind of a blurry shot, but this was one of the first they did in 2009. Again, it was a partnership. Pattern breaking, sustainable, and large scale potential. Um, another is the Safe Place sign. It, how many have seen this sign? Virtually everyone. Um, some people see it but don't recognize uh, exactly what it means or its purpose. It's, uh, it started with the shelter house, YMCA shelter house here in Louisville uh, in the early 80s. And the, the director of shelter house at that time wondered how could kids who were on the streets, who'd run away from home, who've been kicked out of their home, who have no home, how could they get to the shelter? Um, and he started thinking, what if there were front doors all over the community to the shelter? And they started thinking about that, talked with the board, and they started taking the youth at the shelter to different places and said, would you go here to ask for help? Would you go there? And so they did a real uh, grassroots sort of uh, uh, focus group. And they learned that convenience stores and fire stations were two places that kids would say, yeah, I'd go there. I'd ask for help there. Um, so those were the first two types of safe places. At first, groups were reluctant to sign on to become a safe place. They didn't want to invite trouble to their business. Um, but once they saw how it worked, where volunteers pick up the youth, transport the youth to the shelter where the, where the youth meets with a counselor who then works with the youth to try to get some stabilization in their life, some crisis uh, resolution. Once it started working, they had applications. They had people who wanted to be associated with this idea. They had banks applying. Uh, now it operates in 39 states. 132,000 kids have found safety through here. Last year, they developed a text message way for youth who were on the streets to enter a number and find out where the closest safe place is to them. Those are the kind of innovations and pattern breaking ideas that are going on. And, uh, some terms that are starting to evolve, or some models that are starting to evolve out of this uh, and beyond in terms of, so how do we think anew? How do we uh, extend the collaboration power uh, of nonprofits working with for-profits and government? And uh, limited liability, low profit, L3P. Uh, that's a for-profit, but it recognizes that, it recognizes that the uh, most important thing is not just the money the organization makes, but the social responsibility it exercises. It's been approved in Wyoming and Vermont, Michigan, Illinois, not yet in Kentucky. Um, hybrids were for-profits and non-profits contract with each other. We talked about some of those. The idea of cause-oriented marketing, that helps Safe Place get uh, social uh, uh, corporation backers. B Corporation, ways organizations can say that they are socially responsible. There's one in Louisville that I know of. It's uh, in many languages, operates in many countries, but it's a, it's a for-profit, but it meets the litmus for social responsibility as a big corporation. The last is social impact bonds, and I think I need to 
wrap up here, but the social impact bonds are ways that uh, it started in England a couple years ago. Money is set aside for, it's a, it's a way to gain capital for social sector work. And uh, money is paid based on outcomes achieved. People can invest in that. If the outcomes are actually achieved, government repays people for their investment with a return because that has saved government that much money by achieving those results. That's a very short explanation of it, but I'm going too for long here. Let me end with one of my favorite uh, song quotes. Bob Dylan, uh, come, well, we, come mothers and fathers throughout the land and don't criticize what you can't understand. Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command. Your old road is rapidly aging. Please get out of the new one if you can't lend a hand for the times they are changing. For years and years, I saw myself on the new road. And then I was talking to someone about five years ago, a younger person, and I could see that they were looking at me, that I was on the old road that was aging. And I thought, well, you know what I've got to do? I've got to lend a hand. And because our hope is the, the, the young minds that are coming up now. Uh, thank you for the few minutes I had with you. Have a great day. <laughs>